My name is Kate Slater and I'm here to tell you my story. This is a story about dreamers, doers, believers, ordinary people who did extraordinary things. It's a story that shows you're never too small to make a difference. I know because I was there. I was a part of the Match Girls strike. And this is my story. My story begins in the East End of London in 1888, when Queen Victoria was on the throne. In those days, the smoke of tens of thousands of chimneys swirled across the London skyline and the city was filled with factories. One of these factories was called Brian and May Factory, and that was where I worked making matches. I was only 24 years old at the time, but I was one of the older ones. Many of the workers who worked there were between the ages of 11 and 18. There were even children as young as five or six who worked making boxes at home. The bosses liked employing children, often girls, because they were cheap and they had little hands for making things. Actually, the bosses thought they could get away with all sorts just because we were young and working class. Lots of the girls were immigrants who'd come over from Ireland because of the Great Famine. I myself moved from Southampton to London when I was ten because of my dad's work. He got a job on the London docks. Anyway, that made them think they could treat us appallingly. Just imagine it, right? Fourteen hour days, fines if you did even the tiniest little thing wrong, like going to the toilet or being just one minute late. And don't get me started on the foreman. These were the men who supervised us when we worked. They were properly cruel, treating us very harshly. The worst thing about working at the match factory was the white phosphorus we had to work with. This was a very deadly, toxic substance. It made us girls get very sick. You get something called fossy jaw, which is when your jaw literally starts to crumble. Today, science has moved on a lot and doctors now recognise this as a form of cancer. I knew girls who died of it. It was terrifying. A death sentence. But because we were poor, we had no choice but to keep working there. Otherwise, how else would we feed ourselves and our family? I mean, it was difficult enough getting that job. We were even forced to eat our lunch at the same benches we worked at with these toxic chemicals. Can you imagine eating your sandwich off the same table you'd just been working with poisonous liquids on? But we were a tough bunch. Girls and women who could speak our minds. People think of us as poor little match girls. But we were strong. We were powerful. Together, we came and we set about organising a strike. Now, a strike is a form of protest when workers decide to stop working in order to send their bosses a signal that they disagree with them. And that's just what we did. We put down our tools and we told our bosses we wouldn't work unless they made conditions safer and stopped with all the fines. The bosses didn't like that. (laughs) Not one bit. We were supported by journalist and campaigner Annie Besant. Soon it was all over the press and in the news. Imagine that. Us. Ordinary working class girls from the East End. I'll never forget the day we walked arm in arm to the Houses of Parliament. I was wearing my best dress, my best hat, the wind in my hair as we approached Westminster Bridge. Fifty-six of us in total, all marching proud and strong. When we got there, a dozen of us were allowed inside the building's lobby. We spoke to politicians, some of the poshest, richest men in all the land. We made them listen to us, told them about the conditions at the factory and it worked, because less than two weeks later the bosses gave in. They agreed to all our demands. But our story didn't end there. We set up a union which is when workers come together to have more power against the bosses. And our strike inspired more strikes, like the Dockers' strike the next year. Yeah, it made people sit up and listen, made them think about workers' rights and women's rights. Less than 20 years later, and the suffragettes were protesting. They were fighting for votes for women. All across the country and across the world, people started to form unions, and they fought for safe, clean working conditions. Today, around the world, 
young people are making a difference. Greta Thunberg is a young environmental activist from Sweden. At age 15, she began a global school strike movement, protesting against climate breakdown. Malala Yousafzai is another young activist. Age 17, she received a Nobel Peace Prize for her work fighting for the rights of girls to be educated. So remember, you are never too small to make a difference. We turned up the heat on our employers. Our ideas spread like wildfire, burning brightly for all the world to see. But it all began with a single spark. We were the Match Girls.